everybody, I'm Phoebe A. Xavier, writer of Subliminal Latency, and you're watching Two Geeks Talking. Good morning, afternoon, evening, everyone. Two Geeks Talking is an entertainment industry interview show where we interview the creative people from the comic, film, TV, movie, and video game industries. And of course, I'm your host, Kurt Sasso. Welcome to Rapid Fire. The concept of Rapid Fire is simple. 11 questions, 9 to 15 minutes for the interview itself. And we get to talk with creative and talented people in the entertainment industry. So who is our first guest today? Our guest today is a returning guest. She was on the show uh, earlier on in 2022 here, as well as uh, a very talented individual in their own right. She is the uh, editor-in-chief, of course, of 123 Go Publishings. We are joined today by the ever-talented Phoebe Xavier. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me back on, Carrie. Well, it's good to have you back on. It's, it's been a while. I'm glad to see that you decided to come back on the show. So for those that don't know anything about yourself as a creative person, tell us who you are and what you're bringing to Two Geeks Talking today. I'm a comic book creator, but I'm also someone who has been writing short stories for a long time, and I've now decided to put out a bunch of them together as a collection called Super Liminal Latency, which is my first prose book, which I will be publishing. Oh, that's awesome. So out of all of the years that you've been writing, how many years have you been writing short stories? At least 22 years, maybe. Uh, no, actually, I know assignments in high school where I had to write short stories. So going back to probably like age 15. Yeah. So then why is this book important? I don't know if it's important or not, but um, it's important to me. I don't know if it's important to anyone else. It is a good example of what I've been working on for a long time as a writer trying to improve themselves as a storyteller. And I think I've assembled a pretty good collection that you can enjoy that is composed of both science fiction and horror. And you also mentioned when, when we were talking earlier about a genre that, that you created as well, too. Tell us about that. It is called horror porn, and I, I don't doubt that there are other people that have some interest in creating similar media, but my particular definition and development of horror porn is based upon graphic violence, graphic sex, and graphic substance abuse. So I have left a small code in the table of contents that people can use to determine which stories or the horror porn or the other science fiction and horror in case they don't want to read about graphically awful things happening sexually in violence. That's wonderful to see that you're including such legend in, in your books there. I, I wish some of the stories I had read in the past had something like that. That would have made things so spoiler much Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. It gets gritty. Yeah. <laughs> which one did you, which ones did you enjoy writing, I should say? I, I loved writing all of this. Uh, the, the whole collection, absolutely. It was a complete joy to do everything involved in, the, in putting this collection together. Do these stories have titles themselves or is it just a collection all together from start to finish? Like, I, I, I'm just trying to see if there was a story you like oh. personally. Yeah, they all have names individually, 17 stories each named individually that my favorite amongst them, my favorite in the collection was, is the Slipstream fiasco. It's Slipstream cyberpunk, but it's also uh, a comedy and a ghost story. And it is my favorite to read. Every time I read it, I laugh at least like once every page. That is the one that I would encourage people to go to first if they're going to read them out of order. Otherwise, I would just say read them in order. And by the way, thank you for letting me read it ahead of time. I, I did enjoy it a, a lot. I, I have to admit it uh, kept me up at night in some cases. So, Did you read the whole thing? Did you read all 17? Uh, no, I got through about uh, eight of them myself. So I, I didn't have a chance, but I, I enjoyed what I did read. So it was amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much for reading any of it. And I'm sorry for giving you any like uh, <laughs> night frights if we did. I have sent out the promotional copy to a lot of podcast people. Um, so other podcasts that I'm appearing on, people have read it. But individually, a lot of the chapters went out to friends. Yes. Because um, I would always post to my Facebook or my Twitter, like, hey, I just finished a new short story. Does anyone want to read this? Mm -hmm. That's almost the genesis of why I put that warning and the code into the titles is because some of my friends who read some of the horror porn stories were like, hey, Phoebe, we like your sci-fi action stuff, but don't send me this weird rape stuff. 
and I, I honor that. I, I respect that. It's good that people have have boundaries with what they like reading, and and you've included that as well too, as as we've said. So that's wonderful to see as well. Looking at this book, though, when, now that you have everything collected together and you're going on other shows, when can we see it published? And definitely by Christmas is when I'm hoping it's, it'll be up on Kindle. Um, I don't know when exactly it'll be live on um, Indie Planet. But it will also be available print to order on any planet as a a hard copy thing. But I will have it digitally on Kindle as soon as possible. At least it's available for people to peruse over the holidays and, you know, um, fight off the the Christmas bah humbug uh, spirit. (laughs) Yes, fight off Krampus with my evil fucked up story. (laughs) There you go. When you started writing this genre uh, or series, I should say, of short stories, was there anything that surprised you about your creativity in terms of writing? And did you learn anything about yourself? I, I know that I chose challenging topics, mm-hmm. that I definitely explored some like really rough, gritty stuff. I mean, I, I, I think that I learned what I already knew or, or um, doubled down on what I already knew was that I'm leaning towards an ethical person who isn't really comfortable with like talking about rape and um slicing people up into little bits and this and that like that does occur in my story the fact that i was uncomfortable writing it is part of why it should be uncomfortable for the people reading it it's hard enough for some people to start writing a, a single story let alone 17 that you put together in this series here now that you've done this particular series are you looking towards volume two or are you looking towards some newer projects uh, on the coming down the pipe for your so? so there is definitely a second collection that I'm interested in putting out. It will feature um, some nonfiction stuff that is when I wrote as a uh, musical writer, like I covered uh, underground music for a while on urbanvacancy.com. So I will be including my articles off of that website and uh, a couple other nonfiction essays that I wrote. It will also include a horror porn screenplay called Fucked, P-H-U-K-D, apostrophe B. Fucked is the name of a horror porn screenplay that I also wrote. There are at least five or six short stories that are not completed for that. So that is not gonna be uh, immediately available. But the book that I am gonna be working my ass off on is a pure science fiction book. At the core of the book, I don't know if I mentioned this to you last time I was on because I was writing it then, but at the core of it, it's about like white rich people from the future coming back to the 1980s and 90s to pretend that they were the Wu-Tang Clan. And and a complex, like a a violent um, escalation of events that happens because of that. What was the title of that or are you still working on that? That will be called the uh, Blackbird Dossier. Well, Phoebe, I do hate to say it, but that ends this particular episode of Two Geeks Talking. But before I let you go, and thank you again for, for coming on the show. I greatly appreciate it. For having me. One geek to another. <laughs> exactly. Where can we find you and how can we help support you, yourself and your career in, of course, writing? For now, I would say just go to IndiePlanet.com forward slash one, two, three, go. Find some of our comic books there. Uh, this book will be out by Christmas, hopefully. Buy it then if you still have it somewhere some subconsciously that you remember that I wrote this book and you want to read it. We have three books on IndiePlanet.com forward slash one, two, three, go that you can download for free. And that would be Trouble Number One, 13th Moon Volume One, and Gunmetal Black Ops Volume Number Two. Uh, all three of those issues, if you click on the digital download version, are for free. Please click on that and get interested in our, our story powers. Thank you for having me, Kurt. Well, like I said, that ends this particular episode of Two Geeks Talking. You can, of course, find this interview and a thousand plus others on our website, tgtmedia.com or twogeekstalking.com. That's the word, two, not the number two. And, of course, our YouTube channel, which is a lot more updated than our website, youtube.com forward slash c forward slash tgtmedia. And we have a link tree with more social media platforms available, which is linktree.com forward slash two geeks talking. That's the word to not the number two for Mastodon and a bunch of other social media platforms I've recently picked up because why not? And as I say every week, everyone has a story to tell. It's up to me to help bring that out. Thanks for listening, watching on two geeks talking.